Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Tudu's School of Management and we're going to be talking about their Master in Finance. Here with us today in order to do so, I have the pleasure to welcome a Professor of Finance at the TSM. He's the head of the Master in Finance. He's called Milo Bianchi. Hello Milo, how are you? Hi. And we also welcome uh, one of her former students. She's called uh, Isabel Cook. She graduated in 2020 and she's now working at the Crédit Agricole in London. Hello, Isabel. How are you? Uh, hi, I'm great, thanks. How are you? <laughs> well, I'm good. Thank you for asking. You're both here to, to answer my questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. So the pitch is a 60 second talk in which, Milo, you're going to have to tell us everything that we need to know about your program. Are you ready, Milo? Yes. Well, then it's your turn. Okay, so the Master in Finance at the Tudu School of Management is a two year full time program taught entirely in English. The Master is designed and managed by academic faculty with strong research and teaching experience in top European and US business schools. Our master has been recently awarded the EPAS accreditation, which places us in a very selective group of institutions worldwide. The student body is highly international. More than half of our students are non-French. They come from 32 different countries. The master is also highly reputed among employers. Our placement statistics are in line with those of top French business schools. Our fees, however, are not in line with French business schools. Our program remains very accessible. The master is based in Toulouse, which is a wonderful city with amazing quality of life. Okay, great. Let's talk about, we will talk about Toulouse and how great the life is there. But first, I want to go over the entry requirements because I went over your website and it was a candidate's application. So what is it made of? What is the candidate application made of? What are the entry requirements? And what kind of academic background do I need? You said it was Welcome to everyone. So, Milo, could you answer the quest those questions, please? Yes. So it's true. We the program is welcome uh, to everyone. What we typically uh, look in in our admission are the academic background, so the type of study that you did and the grades that you had. So, in terms of type of study, we typically had uh, a mix between uh, economics, uh, business but also math, also engineering schools and physics. And in terms of grades, we typically put a lot of emphasis on the more quantitative uh, courses that you did. Uh, so it's going to be a quantitative master. So we want to make sure that you have a good background, especially in math, uh, statistics, uh, but also more generally on, on in social sciences. So that's the first uh, important part we look at. The second one is your motivation. We want to make sure that you are uh, motivated to study finance, that you are ready to work hard. is is a program that uh, requires a lot of effort. So um, we want to see in your motivation letter that you are ready to do that. And uh, the third aspect is the uh, professional experience. If you had previous experience in finance or you have other you know, experience which are worthwhile uh, mentioning, we certainly um, appreciate that. And the fourth is the level of English. So the, as I said, the master is fully taught in English. You have to be um, fluent in English. You have to be comfortable in having lectures and exams in English. And uh, in order to make sure this is the case, we require at least a level of uh, B2 in English. Okay, Isabel, did you have those four points? I mean, I'm sure you did have those four points because you graduated from it, but like, were you a hard worker? What kind of ap academic background did you have? What kind of professional experience did you have? And how come that you applied to the TSM Master of Finance? Um, well, I think I might be an interesting case study on this because I actually have a BTS in hospitality and catering, um, which also had a management aspect. Um, but through that, I was able to join the license three in management um, after doing that, which then allowed me to move into the master in finance. Um, I think that my level of English definitely helps. I think that I got good grades in all the quantitative uh, subjects, like Milo was saying. So I think that put together, 
um, I compensated perhaps my lack of mathematical and economic background, um, but that wasn't a problem at all. I was uh, more than able to catch up basically to the level of the others that had got my background. Right, so the good news is that you can still compensate some stuff if you don't have those four things at the maximum, those four pillars at the maximum, you can still like compensate. Uh, Milo, can yeah, I... Yeah, so Isabel uh, is, a, is a wonderful uh, case study, so she was one of the best students. Uh, but certainly we look at, uh, you know, math background, uh, if, you, if you come from a quantitative study, that, that's uh, good. But also if you don't, and if you're ready to work hard, that's feasible. You know, typically we give you material, if this is the case, uh, we give you material that you can prepare before entering the master. If you think that you have the potential to, to, to be able to do it, even if you don't have a strong mathematical background, we certainly look at your application very seriously. All right, so it's more like the motivation is the strongest point, is what you're going to look at the most. It's like, if you're ready to, to put the work, we are ready to give you a chance, basically. Well, I can yeah. second that because it took me a lot of work, but in the end, um, it came together. It was not an easy ride. I don't want to make that impression, but um, it was well worth it. So. Well, in the end, you graduated and you're working finance in London, so which is kind of one of the biggest financial places uh, of the world. So I guess, yes, you made it pretty much. Um, Milo, <laughs> do I... Milo, do I need to have graduated from the TSM M1 in finance in order to apply to a TSM M2? For example, for the, you have double degrees and I know that for the double degrees, you, one of the requirements is you need to have the, the first year, the, the, yeah, the master one in finance. Uh, you, have to, you need to have graduated from the TSM M1. Can I separate no. the two of those or is it just like a two-year program? Okay, so this is typically a two-year program, uh, but you can enter the, directly in M2 if you have a degree which is equivalent to M1 uh, already. Okay, so if you did an M1 in another, in another good uh, school in, in finance or in an engineering school and so on, it is possible to enter directly at the M2, in which case you enter directly into the specialization courses. Okay, so the M1 is supposed to give you some uh, uh, foundation of, uh, of finance with the key pillars of, of finance, so uh, the functioning of financial market, the functioning of firms, and also some uh, quantitative tools like math and statistics. If you already had a good exposure to this uh, foundation, you can enter directly into, into the uh, M2 and then go directly into a more specialized track uh, which could be, in our case, either uh, financial market or corporate finance or finance and, finance and information technology. When would it be best for me to apply to one of the... Uh, I mean, I've, I've understood that it's better to go for the full two years program because then you're, you just follow the full logic of the program. But when would it be best for me to apply? So I, I think ideally, the, the, the master is considered to be a, a two-year program, so um, ideally it's best to apply just after the, the license, uh, so after the undergraduate, after the three years of undergraduate. Uh, but that's not the only case. Uh, that's not the only case. We are open to, to, to admit people directly if, if at M2. Isabel, are there any interviews in the application process, in the admission process? Um, so my admission process was uh, already coming from uh, the school itself, but there was um, still an interview process to make sure that um, I was uh, motivated to make sure that I was the right sort of type of person for this course. Um, I think that the questions were quite wide ranging. Why do you want to do finance? Why do you want to do this course? Um, but I think, it's a, I think it's a really important step. I think for admissions, it's good for people to see you know, who they're speaking to and we're not just names on a, on a CV or a list. And do you have any like trick questions? Like, I don't know, you have a rope and you don't have a timer, but you have 19 right, minutes and the rope burns. Yeah, right now. me too. I, I hear very well, Isabel, but I can't hear you. You, you can't hear I me now. I not anything you were saying just then, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Great. So my, my, my question was, are there any trick questions like, I don't know, you have a, a practical question, like you have a rope and it's going to burn, a, I don't know, it's an, it's, it burns it within 90 minutes and you don't have a timer, but you only have one lighter. You know, that kind of question that could be asked 
before applying to a big banks, for example? Uh, no, luckily there weren't that type of question. Um, I wouldn't have known what to say, <laughs> but um, that's, um, they're quite straightforward. I don't think it's the kind of interview process that's trying to find your faults. I think it's the interview process that's trying to um, get the most out of you and allow you to present yourself as positively as possible. Um, right. I mean, maybe we should add some trick questions because there are lots of horrible ones that I've had in interview processes at banks, but no, this wasn't one of those times. Okay, so it's just a positive mind. They want you at your best and at your less stressed. Is there anything you want to add, Milo? Because I want to ask no, the question. No, I mean, we, we don't want to really test people in, on this type of smart question. We, we more want to see, uh, again, their motivation and also the coherence of, between their motivation and uh, what, they, what, they, what they did in the past or what they want to do in the future. So we ask more type of academic question. Uh, describe uh, the type of course that you like the most, uh, what, you, what you took out from your, from your degrees, uh, what are your aspirations, and, and, and so on. So, but they are very open questions. We really want to know more the, the candidate than uh, really testing with, with precise tests. Milo, you mentioned that it was a very international master, that it was in Toulouse, and that it's an amazing city, but Toulouse is also a French city. So yeah. As an international student, do I need to have any kind of French knowledge or are there any French requirements or not at all? And will I need any French if I want to live in Toulouse and have a pleasant life? So we don't, we, we have English requirement and no, and no French requirement. And uh, part of our students come without uh, speaking French. So the, the entire master is uh, designed so that you don't need French. So that is true. Uh, for the coursework, for the exam, of course, but also for the administrative part. Um, so, having said that, uh, again, we are we is based in, in Toulouse and is based in France, as you said. So, it could be also a good opportunity for the student to learn French if they don't, and uh, if they want to do so, for example, they can take advantage of the of the courses which are offered at the at the university uh, and improve their French. Um, but so again, in, in terms of just the master, there's no need for French. In terms of social life or enjoying life in general in France, you know, having a little bit of French does not, does not hurt, of course. I Isabel, when you applied, did you have a clear idea of your future? Did you have a clear idea of uh, your professional future? Like, did you know what you wanted to do before applying or did you discover it through the first year? Um, when I first applied, I wasn't even entirely sure which of the three options I wanted to take, whether that would be the corporate finance or financial markets or finance and IT option. Um, so that didn't hinder me at all. If anything, my internship that I did uh, between my two years, so my gap year that we call it in TSM, that really helped me to figure out what I wanted to do later. Um, Incidentally, I did it at Credit Agricole and I'm still there now. So it's uh, <laughs> it definitely helped me find my way. Um, but I don't think that I don't think it's necessary to have a very, very clear idea of what you want to do. I think that you should allow yourself to be flexible because if you think you have 100 percent certainty and you end up not liking the job, that doesn't mean that you should close all the doors of finance. There are so many different jobs and so many different paths that you can take. Um, if anything, I think it's nice to have an open mind, really. Well, great. Thank you for making that so clear. I, I, yes. I agree with that. If I can add something, this is really what we try to keep in mind all the time when designing also the, uh, the master. So as I said, the first year is trying to give uh, uh, the foundation. So it's, uh, these are very uh, you know, broad courses, on, on, uh, which then can be applied to any uh, field in finance. And even in the second year, there are courses which are specialized, but still there are also courses which are advanced and then can be applied again in a broad range of, of jobs in finance. And as Isabel said, our idea was to, to let a student have an uh, open mind and be ready to take whatever uh, you know, option in finance they, they, they feel uh, most suited with. But boundaries are very, are very thin. You know, you can start in financial market and then continue your career in, in corporate finance or, or vice versa. You can have, you know, the market now is, is requiring a lot of uh, IT knowledge. And uh, so it's very good in the program that Isabel, for example, have done uh, to, to have that. But things might change. So the idea is to have also students 
ready to, 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 to adapt to the changes that are required uh, by the market. Very clear. Isabel, what would be, according to you, the most disruptive aspect of this master? The most what, sorry? Disruptive. Disruptive? The most disruptive aspect. What makes it unique or what makes it unique and new? Um, I think what makes it unique um, is a really great combination of really high quality teaching, which I think uh, more than uh, comes to the level of other schools like the, the Humble Project system. I think that the setting in Toulouse, honestly, I can't think of a better place to be a student, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I think what makes it really special is the collaborative um, element to it. I feel that with it being a university, um, the, the boundary between professor and student isn't necessarily um, very formal. I think that I was able to teach, talk to my professors um, about anything I really needed. I was able to get the support I needed from my uh, tutors, from the, um, the smaller seminar lessons. Um, I just think it was a great combination of uh, basically great teaching, good setting and um, great people, basically. Well, thank you very much. It seems that many things happen in Toulouse, apparently, like it's a great city to live in. You can't think of a better city. But I really want to know what kind of cliche that could be like attached to this city. So let's move on to the to next session and to the cliches. I mean, you're going to have to tell me one of the preconceptions, the ideas that you might have had before applying or once you've applied. And I will ask you, Isabel and Milo, and my cliche would be uh, about Toulouse and uh, the pink city, I believe. And maybe that it's a bit far away, but I guess you're going to demonstrate that it's not that. But OK, what would be your first cliche, Milo? So I, I will let Isabel talk about, about Toulouse. I will uh, talk more about the Master of Finance. and. Uh, as Isabel said, we are within a public university. We are within the University of Toulouse One, and the cliche that we have is that uh, you know fees are low, so the master is cheap, and so we know in finance that if it's cheap, it cannot be good. <laughs> uh, so this cliche, I'm going to argue, is false uh, in the sense that it's true that fees are affordable. We have the standard fees of French public university, which are negligible. But the quality of the program is as good as those of top business schools in France and in Europe. And this can be seen in many ways. You can see the academic reputation of the faculty, which is involved directly in the program. You can see it by the international exposure of our students. And you can see it also by our employment statistics. It's true that we are pretty young as a program, and we are working hard to consolidate our position and to develop our alumni network. But the quality is not bad. OK, well, if it's an asset is cheap and has a lot of value, I guess we should all buy it. I mean, and then make a lot yes. of money out of it. If, if you're, I mean, that would be something like that. I'm not, I'm not a pro at finance, but I guess I would do that. Absolutely, um, we call this arbitrage in finance. And uh, to lose. The, our master is an arbitrage opportunity, and we should thank the French government to make this possible. Yeah, well, yes, before like, uh, the, the, the finance is low, just make it straight. <laughs> Isabel, what would be your cliche? Uh, so I mentioned it earlier. I think that Toulouse has a big cliche of being a big student city and um, you know, lots of fun to do, a great place to, to live as a young person. And I would say it's 100% true. I think that um, <laughs> it's just, it's a fabulous place. I grew up there actually, so maybe I'm slightly biased, but um, I think that it is, as you said earlier, it's a bit far away from Paris perhaps, but within an hour and a half, uh, you can be on the Mediterranean, within two hours, you can be at the Atlantic coast, within an hour, you can be on the slopes skiing. Um, there's so much to do, um, not just outside of Toulouse, but also inside. Uh, it's the pink city, um, so I think it, personally I think it's absolutely stunning, especially this time of year in November. Um, I think mm -hmm. that there is a party atmosphere. I mean, I won't tell you all about all of my parties, but um, there is lots to do and there is always something going on and people out and about, um, which 
I don't think I've ever really seen in any of the, the other places that I'd live personally. Okay, well, no bias, like you said, like you were born no. there and you, you live there. So I guess it's completely neutral. I get it. I get that. Well, yeah. you, you seem very and we said keen. we said it's a very tough program. So you know, parties are okay, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Milo, just want to make sure that people watching don't think they're just party and, and graduate. Just have to think that there's a lot of value in it. I get it, but I'm sure okay. that it's just a way so that you can have fun and still. Uh, have a, a very great degree. Uh, Isabel, you seem very keen on uh, the Toulouse School of Management and the Master in Finance of um, the work in itself and, and the CT. However, however, if you had to change one thing, what would it be? Hmm. Um, well, I can't say nothing, obviously. There are things that I would change. Well, you, 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 can, think... you can always, you can say nothing. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I'm just but as a, as a finance woman, I'm sure you have like some like trick answer to that. Sure. I think the one thing that I would slightly change about um, about Toulouse, I suppose, is that so this isn't really anything to do with the school. I just think that for uh, for if you want to do financial markets, uh, Toulouse is not necessarily the epicenter of French <laughs> financial markets, shall we say? You would definitely have to move. To Paris or like I did to London to a bigger city uh, but that doesn't mean there aren't plenty of opportunities in Toulouse. Um, I think uh, one of the biggest companies in Europe Airbus is based in Toulouse so they hire uh, people constantly. There's plenty of interesting things that you can do there um, if you just step away maybe from um, pure financial markets basically. Well thank you for your honesty. Uh, Milo, uh, <clears throat> you offer double degrees. You mentioned like several like partnership with other other schools, and you have uh, double degrees with the University of Le of Liège, HSC Management School. How do you take the best of these two schools? So it's a competitive program, and we just take uh, a few students which are already admitted to our program in in um, in financial markets or in finance and information technology. And uh, we just select the best in, uh, in those programs and offer them this opportunity to do a double degree. That means that at the end of the two years, you, uh, you will have uh, two degrees, one from the Toulouse School of Management and the other one from HSLEH. So this is a pretty new program that started just before COVID. So we didn't have much action uh, during COVID. So uh, it's something very new. But we, so far, the, the quality of applicant that we got was uh, pretty amazing, and, and we have high hope for that. Do you prepare your student for any official financial accreditation, such as the CFA, for example? So we don't offer any specific courses for uh, accreditation. There are students who do this on the, on the side, and uh, typically what they say is that you know, they have enough knowledge to do this with no... Uh, with no problem, but we don't offer any specific uh, course for, for this accreditation. Do you have any uh, partnership with, with banks or companies? And do your teacher um, have a job within the sector as well, Milo? Because I guess so, you, don't yeah, prepare, so you, you don't prepare your student for the CFA, but I'm sure that if they are preparing the CFA, you, you would help them. And uh, without making that like, specific sure. to uh, a, a specific courses to or the CFA, but yeah, do you have any, any partnership? Isabel, Isabel was telling us that, well, if there was one thing that had to be changed, she did find one thing, yeah. even though it was in Toulouse and, and the best city in the world, I get it. But <laughs> so do you have any, any, any partnership with bank companies yeah. and do your teacher works as well as they're teaching? Sure, so, so just first, one, one thing is more on what Isabel said, I, I totally agree with her. Uh, if you want to work where financial markets are, it's better if you come to Toulouse and do the master and then be ready to, 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 to move. And this is what uh, many students, uh, especially those in financial market track, uh, do. Um, now, in terms of exposure to, to the world of practice or to practitioner, uh, so I was mentioning, I was stressing the fact that the program is designed and managed by academics, but uh, a large part of our course, about one fourth of our course, are, are given by practitioner. Uh, so these are either former alumni of the of the master, 
who come and uh, and teach a more specialized course, a, wo a course that gives you know more state of the art uh, practices in the in the in the business, uh, or they are uh, practitioner with long uh, with long experience who uh, you know on top of uh, of working come and and give courses. So these are very important uh, for us because they give us not only knowledge but also access to uh, to jobs, um, tips, for example, on how to prepare job interviews, uh, what is expected, and and, uh, and how to prepare to them. They they help us, for example, in organizing a field trip. Um, I, I I think Isabel did uh, the field trip uh, in in London, in which you you meet. Uh, you know, banks and financial institution, uh, and again, you get really first-rate uh, uh, knowledge and, and tips on, on, on job search. And in general, I was mentioning before, we try to develop uh, or to strengthen our uh, alumni network because this is the first and the, maybe the most important way in which you get, you know, access to, to, to knowledge and to, and to jobs. Well, Isabel, was it during that field trip in London that you got your job that you're working at now? Um, it wasn't. The field trip was in my Master 2, so I had already done my um, gap year, which led to the job I have now. Um, however, it is because of an alumnus that I got my first job in my gap year. Um, so there was um, a girl working uh, at Credit Agricole in London. Her boss was looking for someone. Uh, I interviewed for the role, uh, but the timing didn't work out. However, um, my CV was passed along to a different department, and I got the job there. So. You know, it's um, it, it's a bit of luck, it's a bit of timing, but I think that without that direct link with the alumnus, uh, I possibly couldn't have known about the job. So it's really important, and we all know uh, as students that it's really important for us to you know to remember our school, to remember where we came from, to be able to help um, and build a community. Because the better the community gets, the better the job prospects are for future TSM students. Well, that's a nice spirit, and it's also like a strong network then that you're going to get at TSM as well. Um, the finance, Emilio, the finance industry is a very competitive environment. I'm not teaching you anything when I say that. What not, I know you kind of mentioned those, but I want to make sure that we really go into details. What national and international accreditation and recognition does this program have to ensure that your student find a job quickly in this competitive environment? Okay, so that we we recently got uh, an EPAS accreditation since uh, 2020, and uh, see, this was a, you know it's a very tough uh, accreditation to get. It requires putting a lot of effort in reviewing uh, the content of our program, the procedure, and uh, the way in which we select students, the way in which we place students, and so this was a very uh, you know a great honor to get to, to get that accreditation. Uh, and now we are moving to a more uh, school-based accreditation through to Equis. So these are very important to attract good students and to get, uh, you know, international visibility. Uh, now, even before that accreditation, I think we had uh, pretty good uh, placement statistics. Uh, so I was I was uh, mentioning that most, you know, many of our students go abroad. Uh, if we had we had. Um, Recently, a survey on, on students, we discovered that 30% of them uh, have jobs abroad uh, now, and they, you know, they experience large job mobility. The, um, and and uh, this is, uh, you know, very encouraging for our, for our, uh, for our program. We see, uh, as, as I agree with you, the, the industry is very competitive and, um, you know, market go up and down. But we, in our experience, uh, at least in the past uh, few years, Students had no problem in finding a job. You know, we, we basically three out of four students had job either before or immediately when they uh, finished the master, and the rest of the students got a job in the next uh, three months. The majority of, of first contract were were uh, permanent contracts, so uh, and they were very attached to the to the uh, aspiration and to the skills that the uh, students had acquired in the master. And also in terms of salary, I, I think we, we, we fare, you know, pretty well. We, we fare at the level of, of uh, top French business schools. So our students report in general initial salary around, uh, you know, 40,000 uh, euro uh, uh, yearly, uh, which is, I would say, a, a, a good salary to start with. 
Well, I guess that would be a right, right cliche. It's like you will have a good salary if you work in finance. That's also true. Um, w um, one last question for you, Isabel, before we go to extra time, because I want to have the, an answer to that question. Is it possible to be both ethic ethical sorry, uh, and work in finance? Like, is those massive uh, issues at the minute, like about like how we're going to I know about green finance, sustainable finance. Can you be both ethical and work in finance? I think you can. And I think that a lot of, uh, so the majority of the market right now um, is ethical. Uh, I think that ethical is not just about um, climate change or green investment, which is very present in the minds of a lot of people in the markets. But I think it's important to be, to be honest, to be open, to not take advantage of um of people whether that's clients or regulators or anyone like that uh but from my experience um on a credit sales desk um the majority of our clients uh will be more interested in um the paper that we're issuing if it does have green credentials for example um so even though there is still there are still parts of finance that will still be financing um you know petrol and oil but Unfortunately, we're still quite reliant on that today. Unless that gets phased out, um, green investment is more than ready to pick up um, when that gets phased out. I think that it's something that's going to be uh, very important for the entirety, the entire structure of financial markets in a few years. Definitely. Well, that's good news, and thank you for your honesty as well. But time flies, and we only have like two minutes left, so let's head to extra time. So extra time is two minutes in which Isabel and Milo, you're going to have to tell us the last thing you want to tell us. Basically, it would be something that you want to emphasize or something that hasn't been said, but you really want to make sure that we hear it before, before we leave. Isabel, I will let you start and Milo, I will let you finish. Uh, okay. Well, I think a really important point that I would stress on is what we were talking about earlier about you know being competitive with uh with the big fee paying schools um my advice to anyone um starting with tsm is that if you are motivated if you get the right grades and if you put yourself out into the world and present the best version of yourself then you will succeed and you can succeed i think that tsm gives more than enough credentials um, to give you the, the right line on the CV that will get you through the door. But if you get the interview for that job that you've always wanted, um, you definitely can get there uh, with the help of the School of Management. And I think the proof is that I started in uh, hospitality and catering and learning how to cook and waitress, but now I work in um, you know massive bank in London in the financial markets. So nothing is impossible, really. <laughs> well, nothing is impossible. That's quite a journey. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> it is. Milo, what would be the last words regarding this interview? So I, I think we touched upon most of uh, the, the important points. I, I just wanted to, to, to follow up on what you said about finance and, and ethics and so on. This is a key uh, part of our program. You know, we, we always, even before, let's, uh, this was a, a, an hype, uh, we, we had uh, uh, ethics at the center of our, uh, of our program. We were teaching students about uh, uh, environmental friendly or about sustainable finance uh, even before uh, it, it became uh, mainstream. And we have strong connection with, uh, with, uh, with the sustainable finance at, at the Toulouse School of Economics at the University of Toulouse One. So students have access to all the activities that that uh, that we do that, and in, in a sense, this gives us students the idea that uh, uh, you know finance is not only about uh, money. There are a lot of important ethical issues that have to be uh, have to be considered, and uh, this type of uh, sensibility, this type of skills, turned out to be pretty appreciated also in the in the job market. All right, so you can be both ethical and rich. You can have a great return on investment by investing in the Master in Finance in the Toulouse School of Management. Thanks to the two of you for answering all my questions. And for the people watching, I hope to see you soon on Campus Chanel.